Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of thread affinity. So when we spawn threads, we rely on our operating system to do the scheduling of these threads to our different cores. Now, unfortunately, our operating system doesn't always do a great job, but this is to somewhat be expected. Our operating system doesn't really know what we intended inside of our programs. So in cases like this, we may want to take this process of scheduling um, into our own hands and do this um, scheduling uh, ourselves. So to do something like this, we can use things like p thread set affinity in p to set the affinity for our threads and dictate where these threads should execute, i.e. Uh, which cores or you know, threads on the actual CPU. So we're going to be looking at this today in a couple of examples here. Um, so we're going to start off by looking at um, just relying on our operating system to do the scheduling of our threads for us, right? Um, with a simple benchmark implemented using Google Benchmark. And then we'll look at the exact same problem, but where we manually set the affinity of our threads and where they should execute using this p thread set affinity in p. So let's go ahead and get started, and we'll look at this OS scheduling benchmark first. So the overall code is pretty simple here, right? We're just going to create a couple of atomic integers here, aligned to 64 bytes so that they wind up on different cache lines. So an aligned atomic A and B. Our work that we're going to be doing from each of our threads is pretty simple, right? Each thread is just going to go through two to the 20 um, iterations of incrementing our atomic int here, right? Coming from this aligned atomic. Now down here is where we spawn our actual threads, right? So we're spawning four total threads um, you know, in, in this benchmark, right? So T0 through T3. And, you know, in this case, right, two of our threads, right, are going to share this aligned atomic A. So T0 and T1 share A. And then T2 and T3 are going to share B here. So we have, you know, a case where pairs of threads are sharing some, you know, same piece of memory here. So this is something that we know as a programmer, but our operating system doesn't know anything about this. So it might not know that, you know, maybe we should schedule the, you know, these threads on the same core, right? Because they're using the same memory. Okay, so that's going to be our OS scheduling benchmark. We're just gonna compile this and run this as is. Now on the other side of things, we have our thread affinity benchmark. And the overall setup is about the same, right? What we've changed though is, you know, how we set the affinity of these threads. So here, right, we are still using a couple of aligned atomics, A and B. Our work function is exactly the same, so 2 to the 20 increments. And we're still spawning four threads here, so T0, T1, and T2 and T3, right? 0 and 1 are sharing this aligned atomic A, and then 2 and 3 are sharing this aligned atomic B. But now we're making these calls to this P thread set affinity in P. So let's go ahead and take a look at the right-hand side of the screen and read a bit what uh, you know, what this actually does. So we go ahead and look at the description here. It says that uh, the p thread set affinity in p function sets the CPU affinity mask of the thread um, to the CPU set pointed to by some CPU set that we're setting here. If the call is successful and the thread is not currently running on one of the CPUs in the CPU set, it is migrated to one of those CPUs here, um, and, you know, in that set. So this is just saying that we can create a set of, you know, the CPUs where a thread should run, and then we can, you know, give that set to a thread, right? So in this case, how are we setting it up here? So we create, you know, two CPU sets. So CPU set zero and CPU set one, right? Each of these sets is going to be for a group of our threads here. So CPU set zero will be for threads zero and one, and CPU set one will be for threads two and three. So then we'll go ahead and zero out the CPU sets using the CPU zero function. And then we'll go ahead and set the actual cores where we want to pin the threads to, right? So we only, we want to dictate exactly where these threads should execute. So we're going to say that um, threads zero and one, right? That are going to belong to this or be given the CPU set zero will only take core zero and our threads two and three will be given the CPU set one and they'll be given to core one, right? So our threads will only be able to execute on core one here. Okay, so let's see how we go ahead and set that here. So over here, right after we spawn our threads, right, we're going to make calls to this p thread set affinity in p. And we're gonna go ahead and assert um, and, and kill our program if this call happens to fail. 
Now, this is a pthread function, and we're using std thread here. So we're going to need to get you know, a handle to our native pthread here. But luckily, we can just do that with this call to you know, our thread.native handle. So that's how we get a handle to our pthread here. Then we go ahead and set our you know, CPU set T here, right? So we go ahead and pass that to pthread set affinity in P, right? The size of the CPU set, and then of course, right, uh, we just pass you know, a pointer to the CPU set zero. Uh, and we do the same thing for thread one here, right? We pass both T zero and T one the same CPU set zero. Now we do a very similar thing for our threads two and three. We just pass them the other CPU set. So the CPU set one. And then of course, afterwards, we just wait for our four threads to join. Okay, so that's how we're, you know, kind of pinning our threads to specific cores here using the set affinity. Because we know that threads zero and one are going to be using the exact same aligned atomic and the same thing for threads two and three, right? We might want to pin them to specific cores instead of just allowing our operating system to, um, you know, schedule them however it sees fit. So let's go ahead and quit out of here and see the performance difference between these two different benchmarks. So we'll first compile this operating uh, system scheduling benchmark with O3 optimizations. And of course, lib benchmark and lib pthread we're linking against uh, because we are using Google benchmark. And we'll do the same kind of compiling for thread affinity with the exact same compilation flags, O3, L benchmark, and L pthread. So let's go ahead and first just look at things from a performance perspective. So we'll go ahead and run this OS scheduling um, program, and we see that it takes around 41 milliseconds total, right, for our four threads to complete all that work. Um, now let's go ahead and run the thread affinity one, where we actually pin our threads to specific cores. And what we see is that it's a whole heck of a lot faster. In fact, it's about, you know, almost five times faster here, right? And, and, and this is largely because, you know, what we've done is we've uh, pinned threads that are, you know, working on the exact same piece of data to the exact same core. So unlike our OS scheduling, right, where threads might be migrated to different cores and competing for some cache line, and that cache line is bouncing around between different caches, because we've pinned these different threads to the exact same core, they're looking at the, you know, same aligned atomic in the same uh, you know, cache, right, uh, as each other, right? So thread zero and thread one are both right at core zero here, and they see, and they're using the exact same copy in the exact same cache here, where they might even be serialized, right? Where one does all of its work followed by the other. But the key point is we don't have all of these invalidations. Now, there's a couple ways that we can observe this. One is through looking at the, um, the L1 data cache miss rate. So for example, we can do perf stat and run, you know, our OS scheduling, um, you know, benchmark here. So perf stat dash D. And what we see is that we have a pretty high L1D cache miss rate. So in fact, it's about 33% here. But if we compare that to our, you know, thread affinity benchmark, we see that our L1D cache miss rate is, you know, 0.36%, right? It's almost non-existent. And that's because we've gotten rid of all of these, you know, cache line invalidations, right, from other caches. Another way that we can observe this is using perf CTC, just like we saw with the false sharing benchmark. So we can check these hit M events. So we can do perf CTC record, right? And run something like our OS scheduling benchmark. And then do perf CTC report and what we see is our two cache lines that are bouncing around, right, um, between our different cores here. So we can maybe uh, look at one in more detail here. So of course, we're just accessing one element on these cache line uh, from two different threads here, right, at offset zero, because we've al this aligned atomic is aligned to 64 bytes. And, you know, if we go ahead and look over here, right, we can see this CPU count. And if we go ahead and go over to the end, right, and look at some more information about our CPUs, we see that our threads are, have run on a total of five different CPUs inside of this example here. So this is why we have so much contention and so many invalidations, right? And so many of these hit M events. Our cache lines are just bouncing around between these different cores because our threads are living on different cores. In our other example, where we pin threads to the same core, we no longer have this bouncing around of a cache line. Okay. So 
that's a little bit about this, you know, thread affinity, right? And how we can pin threads to um, specific cores. Now, there's many situations where you might want to do something like this. And it isn't just about pinning to specific cores on the same processor. It might you might be dealing with new environments, right? Where we hit, you have threads, you know, even on different processors, right? And you wanna make sure that threads working on the same data might be on the same processor rather than split across different processors where, you know, the contention might be very, very bad, right? Um, right, or lead to very big performance drops, right? Even more so than contention on the same processor. So that's something to look at as well. Now, another situation is things like hyperthreading, right? Where we might have on the one physical core, two uh, threads, right, at the same time, right? Two paths of execution. Now, for a situation like that, you might want to co-schedule threads working on the same data to the same physical core, right, on hyperthreads. Now, to get information like that, you can look at things like the thread sibling list for a particular core to figure out where you should pin a thread here. Now, for this particular CPU, there isn't any hyperthreading. So if we, you know, concatenate um, this thread sibling list, right, for, you know, say something like CPU zero here, um, we see we just have a single entry in the thread sibling list, right? There is no other thread sibling here because we don't have hyperthreading enabled. Um, so that, that, that's not an example that we can do on this specific processor. Okay. So that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. Uh, below the video, I'm going to go ahead and link that information on pthread uh, set affinity in P. And I'll also uh, you know, put a link down to this you know, kernel.org doc that you know, talks about these things like thread siblings and thread siblings list. And as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.